Hello, my dear friends. How are you doing? Hope you are having an amazing day and not having to deal with drama. Ready for new stories I have for you today? Let's go to the first one. And don't forget to listen to the end of the story, guys, to hear my insights. Enjoy the stories. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, don't forget to leave a comment. I, 31 female, have an older sister, Mary, 33 female. Mary has always been the favorite. Growing up, my parents idolized her because of her looks, grades, she was athletic, and more. She is described as my parents' golden apple baby. I, on the other hand, was both two years later. I was an accident. I was born prematurely with a heart condition. Growing up, I was in and out of the hospital receiving countless surgeries. My parents always threw in my face that I was draining their money, even though my grandparents always paid for anything insurance didn't cover. She never hid her hatred towards me. She'd constantly pick on me, and my parents did nothing about it. When I graduated high school, I had enough. I begged my grandparents to pay for me to go to college states away, just so I could get away from her. That was the best decision ever, because that's where I met my now husband, Greg. Greg was a sweetheart. He always made me feel beautiful no matter what size I was. After graduating, we ended up getting married, and which his parents paid for because my parents refused, stating they spent too much on my sister's wedding a year prior. They didn't even bother to attend the wedding. We ended up choosing to live in the city we graduated in. I rarely talked to my family back home outside of my grandparents. Greg and I later would have a son together. This was a high-risk pregnancy. I was advised to terminate early on, as the results could be fatal. Luckily, we both made it. I almost didn't, though. The amount of strain it put on my heart was detrimental. I was strongly urged by doctors to not have any more children, and we agreed. Fast forward to about one month ago. My family and I moved back to my hometown after my grandpa's health was declining, and I wanted to be near him. As soon as I moved back, my parents and sister started acting very nice to me. My mom would ask me how I was doing and tell me how proud she was of me, which is something she never does. My sister would join and do the same. I knew something was up, but my grandmother said to give them a chance, and maybe they missed me. Two weeks later, I was invited to my parents' house for family dinner. While at the table, my sister said she had a present for me. She whipped out a card, and I opened it, expecting it to be an apology letter. But no. To my surprise, it was a letter stating that my sister found out she's infertile and congratulating me on becoming her surrogate. I was floored. I told her that I cannot have her baby. I tried to explain what my pregnancy did to my body, with my heart, and she started crying. My parents began screaming at me for being selfish and not wanting to help out my sister. I explained that the doctors instructed me no, but they said, for family you take risks. I couldn't believe it. I grabbed my husband and stormed out. I can't help but feel bad still. So am I the a-hole for not wanting to be a surrogate for my sister, risking my health in the process? As I understand, OP never told them about her complicated pregnancy and delivery. If they had a normal relationship, I would say OP should meet them again and tell them the absolute truth, that she had a very high-risk pregnancy, almost died, and literally can't have more kids of her own because doctors say it's too great a risk. But the truth is, if OP was completely healthy, she would never do this for them because of the way they treated her. They were horrible parents and an awful sister, so I don't think they even deserve an explanation. I'd rather go no contact with them. Life would be much easier in drama and headache free. And now let's see if the community agrees with me. And a Fiat 5890 says, Not the a-hole, but for your own health, I suggest you move away from your hometown to be as far away as possible from these people. Got to think about it says, Never for a nanosecond consider the possibility that you are an a-hole. One, your health won't handle it. They're a-holes for even expecting you to sacrifice your health to have a baby for someone you don't like. Two, you don't like your sister. She's ever only made you unhappy. Imagine the emotional trauma of having to carry a kid and then give an innocent soul to the demon in disguise. I couldn't live with myself if I sacrificed an innocent soul to her. 3. They didn't ask. They told you. That alone makes it a no for me. 4. Your parents are a-holes. 5. The only reason you should feel bad is because it proves you need to stay no contact with your parents and your sister. Send them a letter that you're disappointed that your familial relationship has come to an end. Since they don't care about your life, you will no longer have them in yours. Then enjoy your family. You've paid your dues, and you're doing the world a favor by not helping your sister procreate. 
I, 30 male, was married to my ex-wife Claire, 28 female, for four years until I found out she had been cheating on me with an ex-boyfriend. Needless to say, the marriage ended and we got divorced about eight months ago. During the divorce proceedings, I learned that Claire's younger sister, Cindy, 20 female, had known about the affair but chose to keep quiet about it and helped Claire hide the affair for me and her family. Before all of this, I had promised to pay for Cindy's medical school costs, as myself and my family are wealthy, and despite the divorce, I decided I was going to pay for her education, as at the time, I felt I didn't need to punish Cindy for what her sister did. However, as I said before, it was during the divorce proceedings that I found out about what Cindy did, and once I found out that Cindy was complicit in hiding Claire's infidelity, I felt betrayed and decided to revoke my offer. I told Cindy eight months back that she should look for a loan or for other funding and I won't fund her anymore. I had already paid for one semester. Recently, when I received an email from the college regarding the upcoming semester fees, I responded by informing them that they should direct any further inquiries to Cindy, as I would no longer be funding her education. Cindy called me screaming and crying and accusing me of being cruel and heartless for cutting her off. She says that her family couldn't afford the tuition without my support and that she would have to take out a loan. I told her she is not my concern anymore and I blocked her. When her father contacted me, he was more calm, asking if there was any possibility of reversing my decision. I stood firm and said I had no intention of continuing to support Cindy financially. He said he understands and will try to make Cindy understand too. For context, he was very good to me during my marriage and offered me support when I told him I was going to divorce Claire. This decision has caused a rift among my friends and family. While most of them support my decision, some have criticized me for not honoring my previous promise to Cindy. Even my own mother is urging me to reconsider, citing my past promise and the fact that paying for Cindy's education wouldn't be a financial issue for me. However, my father stands by me, agreeing with my decision. Truthfully, I have the means to pay for Cindy's entire medical school education without difficulty, but I can't shake the feeling of betrayal caused by Claire's cheating and Cindy's complicity. But I feel conflicted. So am I the a-hole? Well, it's likely that Cindy, upon discovering her sister's affair, kept it a secret specifically because she wanted to keep OP funding for her college expenses. If that's the case, it makes her behavior even worse. OP owes her nothing. She had the option to treat OP with respect, and she didn't. She was selfish. These are the consequences of her actions. OP might have made a promise to her, but OP also promised his wife a lot of things when they got married, and now they are getting divorced. Sometimes promises are conditional. And now let's hear the community's opinion. Little Ian says, Cindy is upset because she got caught hiding her sister's secret, and now she's paying the price of betrayal. You were helping her out of kindness, yet she could not repay that to you. Not the a-hole. Trailsia says, The promise was based on having a good relationship with them. They both betrayed you. Cindy probably under pressure of her sister, but that is ultimately irrelevant. Not the a-hole. And tell your annoying mother to mind her own business. Mustang says, I agree. I don't believe in this hiding family's cheating, or worse, covering by saying she was with me, etc. She can take out student loans. She just learned a lifelong lesson. Actions have consequences. Funny how fathers understand the husbands when this happens. Almost apologizing and saying I didn't raise them to do that. I, female 19, had a baby girl six weeks ago. My fiancé and I decided to take some time off by ourselves, to bond with our baby by ourselves, and also so I could heal a little. Neither of our families have met our baby yet, so we decided to let them meet her this week. Our parents and my two older brothers came. One of them is married. His wife, female 32, and him have two kids, five and two. So I admit that especially the first week was super hard. I found it particularly hard to find a comfortable position to nurse. My baby wouldn't latch correctly. It hurt you name it. But I got better at it. My fiance and I are trying to teach our baby to take the bottle, just in case, but so far she hasn't shown any interest in it. She starts crying and refusing to nurse with a bottle, so I'm exclusively breastfeeding her. Well, all of this to say that when our families visited us, my sister-in-law started being very annoying about it. She kept telling me that the way I was holding my baby was wrong, the way I was laying her was wrong, that she shouldn't latch like that, all kinds of stuff which started adding up and I was very annoyed at her during the visit. She asked me about pumping and if I've tried. I said that I have to pump sometimes, 
but that usually either we drink the milk, which by the way she said it was nasty, or that I would throw it to the sink, since my baby doesn't want to feed if it's not for my breasts. She told me that this is because I'm doing it wrong. She said I have to pump and force my baby to drink it by not giving in. Basically, let her be hungry until she uses the bottle. She said that she did that for her kids, and that a bottle was best because my breasts will look bad afterwards if I let my baby breastfeed all the time. I told her that I won't do that since I won't let my baby go hungry. She said that she's helping since I know nothing, and I very clearly need the help because I'm a child with a child. Well, she had been annoying me all day, and I snapped at her. I told her who does she think she is, and that she's not a better mom just because she's older than me. That, in fact, I think she's worse, since she admitted to letting her kids go hungry. We got into an argument because she was very offended by what I said. Everyone was trying to calm us down, but then she said that my brother was right, and that I was a spoiled brat who thinks I know better than anyone else. I was kind of shocked, because that means that my brother is talking behind my back. So I got even more upset, and told her that both of them are bitter sad people. My fiancé then kicked them out. I've got some time to calm down now, so I'm wondering if I went too far. Maybe I should have said thanks to her advice and let it go. Perhaps my hormones and the lack of proper sleep is getting to me, and what I did was wrong. So I'm doing this post to hear some options. I'd rather talk about this with non-biased people. I always say, don't give advice if you're not asked for it, especially to new mothers. She was being incredibly rude and judgmental, but it is also super common for moms to be the worst at other moms in the eternal best mom competition. Less ordinary says, not the a-hole. Actually, you were doing nothing wrong and what you told her is right. She was actually wrong with everything she told you. You don't force your baby by letting them go hungry. Your breasts will be fine. I have to think she is probably jealous. I would reach out to your brother if it's bothering you and talk to him. Also, tell him if they visit, no advice. You sound like you're on top of things and doing a great job. Don't ever let anyone talk to you like that again. That wasn't advice. That was insults veiled as advice. Congratulations on your baby. Fragrant Economist 386 says, Not the a-hole. One week after having given birth, you are not required to receive unwanted advice gracefully. Besides, her advice sounded bloody awful. As far as I know, it is quite normal that babies don't breastfeed well the first 48 hours or so. Both mum and baby has to learn. But you have that down now. Baby is being fed and you've got this. If you need advice about these things, ask a professional or someone who is not primarily concerned with how her boobs will look afterwards. I, 53 male, love to cook. There will be days where I slave in the kitchen all day to make a big meal and I will do it happily. My wife, 50 female, can cook when I'm not around, but honestly, I can't think of any time when she has made anything because I always wanted to do it. And that's fine by me, as long as I feel appreciated for it. I have a 24-year-old son, Eric. My wife has a 19-year-old daughter, Liz, from previous marriages, and we have a 15-year-old son, David, together. Eric lives with us for now to save up money while he works, but still pays rent. He will eat literally anything, with the exception of hating blue cheese. David likes pretty much everything, but is allergic to eggs. I can work around these constraints pretty easily when I cook. Liz is a different story. She has always been kind of picky with the food she dislikes, but has gotten way worse. She went to college for a semester and then dropped out, so now she is living at home. And while she was away, she developed some terrible pickiness. She has had stints of being vegan, being vegetarian, being grain-free, pasta-free, oil-free, etc. But she isn't consistent about it. I try to meet her needs, but on any given day, she has something new to complain about with the food I want to cook. Sometimes she and I will debate for hours about what to make, with me basically saying, tell me what you want for dinner that will work for you and I will cook it, so long as it meets the other kids' restrictions. And she is so unhelpful with this. Two nights ago, I cooked a dish that Liz told me looked good in a book. We all sat down for dinner, and everybody loved it, except Liz. She complained that she didn't realize there were peanuts in the recipe, and peanuts are so unhealthy for us, so she doesn't think she can eat it, and I can make her something else. I was fed up and told her, no, you can eat this or you will eat nothing. I'm done having to deal with your pickiness and criticism of my cooking. I will no longer be taking any of your feedback on what you want for dinner, and will be cooking what everybody else wants. You can either eat that or cook yourself something else. She started crying 
and said that I take the other kids' restrictions on what to eat, so why can't I do the same for her? I reminded her that Eric only dislikes a single thing that I don't care for either, so there's no risk of it popping into a dish. And if David has eggs, he will probably die, so it's not the same as her vetoing every single thing I want to make. My wife took her side and said that I'm being too sensitive and mean because Liz is not my real daughter and I'm showing favoritism. This is BS, by the way. I told my wife that she can cook Liz meals if she wants, as if, but I'm not going out of my way to meet her needs. Am I the a-hole? Sick Delirium says, not the a-hole. The issue isn't your daughter's preferences. It's that they're constantly shifting. You aren't playing favorites. She doesn't understand the work that goes into cooking and is taking your cooking for granted. Your wife is too, by saying you should cater to your daughter's every day-to-day -day whim. Particularly offensive is that she even picked out the dish she wanted you to cook and then wanted you to fix her mistake overlooking an ingredient after you already put in all the work. Make her or both of them cook their own meals until they learn to appreciate your efforts. Quick Quinn X says, not the a-hole, but beyond that, you've shown incredible patience thus far. I get accommodating health needs, but Liz is almost turning dinner into a daily pop quiz for her erratic food rules. And it's horribly unfair that your efforts, clearly made with love, are being dismissed on a whim. She's an adult and perfectly capable of preparing meals aligning with her ever-evolving palate. Your job isn't to be an on-call chef ready to adapt to the day's dietary decree. It's to provide, which you are doing. Also, dietary exploration is fine, but a little gratitude wouldn't go amiss either. 